Hello everybody and welcome back for episode 7 of our Eredun campaign in Third Age to the War, Divide and Conquer. So, last episode we reclaimed Under Towers, we had a battle, uh, couple of battles with Angmar, kind of kicking their ass a little bit already. And we are also marching on to Bree and trying to get a peace alliance with them, but not before we take care of Buzira Doom, which we are sending a force to take it, or retake it I should say. I guess we could also, if we want to, move on Mikkel Delving, but... No, I'm not sure actually. I think I'm still gonna go through with the plan to get an alliance, well not an alliance, but a peace treaty with Bree in exchange for Under Towers, and then focus on Angmar for now. Should also get an alliance with Enedwyth, as Anerian pointed out, that would completely secure our southern border. Melkor also pointed out that I can start destroying my armories in these buildings, in these settlements, but I think I'm gonna keep them for just a tad bit longer. Just until we like... Uh, actually, the chance of us getting attacked there is so small that if we get attacked there, it would just mean that we're playing very poorly. We're not going to get any more doom stacks, so I think, yeah, let's actually get rid of them. Uh, Durin's arm, if we destroy, we actually get a fair bit of coin back, plus 250 income that we get extra per turn. Alright, boom, off you go. Oh, that. Okay, that destroyed the public order. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, retrain you. Okay, who's in a... I think you also got an armory, so let's destroy all the armories. Don't need them. Faham Gathol probably has one as well. Yep, probably gonna make you unhappy. Nope, okay, good. Um, did we finish the barracks here? No, one more turn. And then we should be able to train some elites. Uh, we'll keep it in Garth Helagoth for now. Perth and Noon, eh, we can keep it there for now as well. Alright, so that opens up a bit more money. Let's build an armory. <laughs> I am kidding, do not worry. Goth, Heligoth, uh, practice range, Smithlon, I should get my port back there at one point. Uh, okay, under towers, I'm not really gonna build anything, I don't think. Is there anything here I can destroy? Uh, chicken farming doesn't do anything for me. Us dwarves, we don't eat chicken. We only eat the finest pork. We keep that armory for now, I guess. Um, do, 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 do. Well, preferably, I just get more troops at this point. That's what I mostly need. Uh, so, fam, get all. Let's get some troops. There we go. Okay. So you're all teaming up. It's going to be a fairly uh, decent squad. Just hold the bridge for a bit. Uh, yeah, I'd love to take Ost Galan, but as you can see, there's a huge garrison here. So, might be a little bit scary. Oh yeah. Also, I should move these troops out. They're not really doing anything. We'll leave the general behind. I can go home for retraining. I should. Probably faster crossing with the ship. Um, well, I still have some money to spare. Let's see that we're building everywhere. Well, Perth and Dune can't build anything there. Who's no? Let's build something. Let us get. Hmm. Ballista Maker, maybe? So we can start chunking out Dwarven Catapults. That'd be nice. Got Helagoth. Get the practice range so we can train better troops. Mythlon. We're building here. Can we train anything here? Nope. Hold on to our building. Under towers. Uh, not gonna build anything there. Just seems like a waste. Although under towers could bring in a nice set of money because, of course, the Elostidian stone gives us building cost reduction and increased in tradable goods. It's not a horrible settlement. Alright, let's end the turn. Having some spare cash is never bad. In fact, it might be one of the only times, one of the first times at least, that we have some spare cash. Alright, but I'm, I'm feeling way more confident. I do feel back in the saddle, so to speak. I mean, it's far from... Uh, campaign's far from one, but we're doing pretty well now. Considering where we were at, and with that Elven Doomstack, if they played like they normally would have played if it was still Linden instead of High Elves as a conjoint faction, we would have gotten crushed. <sighs> anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm doing pretty good myself because I'm making hamburgers later. And if you don't know that, it's one of my favorite foods. I love hamburgers. I love spending a lot of time making hamburgers, so like all kinds of special ingredients and shit. My specialty burger, the Izzy Burger, is with onions. Axmith got in Harland. Nah, not in Harland. I'm gonna bet on Gran. Talk to. Take Buzzardum for 2,000 coins. They don't already have that mission. Sounds familiar. Is with onions, blue cheese, like moldy blue cheese, and honey. 
Just a little touch of honey. Let's get these guys. Even these guys are like fairly decent. For 290, it's pretty good. Hello, Bree. Prefer if Bree would just get peace with me and I could keep under towers. That'd be perfect. Alright, so he's joining forces. We're joining forces. A little bit worried about what's going on over here. Uh, I should have another spy somewhere. Where are you, other spy? Lists. I know, but yeah, like a nice juicy burger. Diplomat, spy, Shire West. Oh, your lot. Oh, there you are. Uh, let's go down here. Let's kind of see what the hell's going on. Man, why is he tanking up Oscalon like that? Jesus. That's going to be tough to take down. Alright, you guys. Just going to make a big stack with Clan Lord Gore. Thorin's Hall's got the barracks completed, so now we can start chunking out Long Beard Phalanx. Yes. With 6 attack, that is 2 higher than the Eredluin Pikemen. And just overall more tanky, so let's get them. Long Beard Swordsman. 10 attack, 20 defense versus 814 of the Eredluin Militia, so quite a bit better. Quite a bit more expensive as well. <laughs> but let's get them. We can already get the second tier of our barracks. What does that give us? Um, Grimborn Reavers and Gabilgathol God. Eh, I'm less stoked about them. I'm more stoked with the Longbeard Phalanx. Those are going to make a big difference. Let's get the fairground. And that is all my money gone. <laughs> The Wandering has been located in Dunyard, okay. At a siege. I thought it was in him larges. Tombstack still there. Okay. Would Bree be interested in a peace treaty? We shall listen to your proposal. Yeah, it would be very generous. So we might just take Buzradum and then get a peace treaty. Actually, could have tried asking for Buzradum. We can take Buzradum and keep under towers if it's very generous, because then they don't want anything more. Um, a little bit worried about this guy. Because I want to meet up these troops with this guy. Move on Ostgalon. I mean, if we crush him, I guess that's most of their army gone. And getting them caught in a settlement would be quite nice, seeing as they're usually not smart enough to actually move out their forces. So let's start teaming you up. You're costing me a lot of money, though, these troops. Is there any fort nearby? No. There's a fort here, but that's pretty far off. Alright, so let's just keep moving on Buzra Doom. Capture that. Get ceasefire with Bree. Ah, yes, you're moving to my good friends, can't. Get ceasefire with Bree and then just focus on Angmar, which should go relatively smooth. Should be fine. And then we can turn on Bree. And also talk to Dianet Wife. We don't want to piss them off. But all in all, I should get a ceasefire with Bree in two turns, then I can move that diplomat down south towards the end of Yeah. Anyway, I was talking about burgers. And I can't stop talking about burgers, because I love burgers. Do you guys have a favorite burger? Let me know in the comments. I am always eager to talk about burgers. It's also one of those things, whenever I go to like a city, or I go on vacation, or just anywhere new, I always want to go to like a hamburger place, and just try whatever they have there. And if they have something with blue cheese on the menu, I always take that, because I love blue cheese. And my god, my economy is shit. Even though the mining network in Fahamgathol is done. What is costing me so much money? It's army upkeep, isn't it? Yep. So the mines are bringing in not as much as I would have thought. Only 4k. I guess it doesn't take into account the bonuses we get from these guys. So we should start using our troops. Because if we're going to keep waiting... Well, taking Wizard of Doom would be a nice start. And we'll actually just occupy it, because we don't want to destroy the mines. Yeah, you don't like me, it's just fine. You go home for retraining. Um, I'll keep you around. Uh, well, I guess I should just start moving out. Could we meet these armies up? Can they move far enough? No, nowhere close. I'm pretty sure I could beat this guy. Pretty sure I can. I prefer to fight him on the bridge. I wish he'd attack me on the bridge. We'd have such a fun battle. Captain Lindenkind. It's also a very Dutch name. Lindenkind. Kind is child. Linden. I think it's a tree, to be honest. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so, yeah, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I guess I'll send them over, but send them around. If you know what I mean. Like, send them here. Meet up here. 
join them up. It's pretty much a full stack with two generals, lots of pikemen, lots of crossbows. Lots of crossbows? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, lots of crossbows. Shrek those guys, go for Ostgalon. If he wants to try and take under towers, be my guest, it will work out. Take Buzzard Doom, get peace with Bree. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I got a, a solid battle plan. We are good to go. We are good to go as we reach Khand. So I do wonder, which of the two campaigns do you guys like the most? Khand or Ered Lewin? If I have to base myself on viewership, Khand would win by a little bit. More people watch the Khand campaign than the Ered Lewin campaign. Which makes sense, because there's a couple of people who are also doing Ered Lewin campaigns, but there's basically no one that does a Khand campaign. I think my campaign of Khand is the only Khand campaign in version 4 right now, but I might be mistaken. So yeah, it's just less... Um, Oh, come on. That's competition for me. I have a Monopoly on Kant campaigns. Mwahaha. <laughs> Don't do Monopoly, kids. That shit breaks relationships. Okay. Fornos assaulted. Good. Let them die. Oscalon seems to be moving out a little bit. I'm not sure what they're doing. There we go. The Doomstack. Dwarven Doomstack. Oh, don't go for Mythlons. Oh. Get on the boat. Go to Mythlon. I still have the armory in Mythlon, right? Yep. If he wants to gather, go. I think I could crush him. Although it will be pretty tough. Alright, let's just take Buzzard and Doom with our one catapult. Should be enough. Wes and Paladin. Save the game because you all know how piss poor I am at defensive siege battles. But this should be fairly easy. They don't have any archers or anything. Well, they have their Bandabras archers. Over. Never mind. Should be easy to take. And then when we have peace with Bree, we can march out of Under Towers. Hopefully, we don't need to sell Under Towers. If we have to sell Under Towers for peace, we will do it. But I hope we can do it without. Actually, you should not be manning that. Uh, Green Park can do it. Actually, no, let the Pikes do it. What am I doing? Archers. Uh, no, wait. Ah, uh, okay, there we go. And then Green Park, Cavalry, you're not really gonna do much, I don't think. Alright, he's hiding all the way in the back. So, never mind, we can all walk up. Well, that's good. We can use our crossbows to great effect without having to worry about losing anyone. Shoot him down. And the Brass Archers. They're quite tall for hobbits. Uh, Breland Militia. What is that? Merchant dudes. And then the Breland Bodyguard, who are quite feisty. I quite like their maces as well. Pretty cool design. Oh no, I don't mind Breeze's design that much. I quite like them as a faction. Alright, laddies, let's batter down the gate. Push that ram. Stop blocking the ram, dumb fucks. It's like playing Mountain Bleed Battle Lord all over again. Alright, knock knock, motherfucker. And soon this land will be ours again. Look at it. Ah. Buzra Doom, you've seen many owners. Actually, you've seen just different owners change up uh, ownership. First it was Rebels, then it was mine, then it was Breeze, then it was mine, then it was Breeze. Now it'll be mine again. So, yeah, full circle. Couple circles. Right, getting there as fast as possible. Um, well, how should we go about this? I'd say we meet up here, and then split our forces there and there. Let him make a choice. Actually, no, we'll send our cavalry here. Send our troops here. Try to force him out through archer fire, and then charge him with the cavalry in the rear. That's the strategy. Alright, as my men sluggishly trying to climb up a hill. Come on, boys. You're not that out of shape. You're dwarves! Also, apparently I pronounced Auli wrong. Or Ollie, or whoever the the guy is the dwarf is a dwarf. 
Someone will correct me in the comments. So I'm just going to say a lot of shit that will probably be wrong, but one of them will be right, and then you can be like, hey, that one was right. Oli, Auli, Ole, Ola, Uli. One of those must be correct. Alright, dwarves. Let's get your asses into a semblance of a decent position. Cavalry, you shall take position there. Bit of a slow battle, but yeah, that's what happens when the AI takes place all the way in the back. As I continue to stumble over my words, like a 13 year old boy who's talking to his crush for the first time. We've all been there. Don't you deny it. We've all been there. We're all awkward as heck. Those pikemen are bloody fast compared to everyone else. I guess they give them a higher movement speed so they move faster in phalanx. 95%. No, they got the same movement speed as everyone else. Must be just uh, inherent to being a pikeman, I guess. Odd. Very odd. Vendorous archers. The shields on the back. The tiny swords. These guys have long swords. Man, I should buy a sword at one point. Just for shits and giggles. Would be fun to own one now. Oh, you're still fresh. Lord, no, I wouldn't be fresh from climbing that hill. Jesus Christ. I actually was in Germany a couple months ago. Which was probably my only road trip of the year with the corona shit going down. It was in Germany a couple months ago and we went to Freiburg, which is all the way in the south. It's very close to um, Austria. And Freiburg also had like a nice, what used to be I guess a castle on top of a hill. It kind of looks like, like this in a way. But also like really steep, steeper than this walkways, which makes sense of course. If you're a defender, you have a castle. If your attacker comes on this kind of hill in full plate armor and he has to like climb hundreds and hundreds of steps, he's going to be that tired by the time he reaches you. Yeah, that was a, a lot of fun. So I know how tired they must be feeling. There's no way they're fresh. At the very least, they must be warmed up or just sweating a little bit. The hot blaring sun with all their armor. Still wearing their cloaks as well. All I'm saying is those dwarves must be sweating their asses off. Alright, we're almost finally in position. Let's move up the pike a little bit because Lord knows we're not far enough yet to hit them. So we'll use the Brobby Marksman to lure them out, seeing as they have the biggest range. You guys position yourselves here. Although Dwarven Travelers would have a better arc, but that range is much less. 150 versus I think 190, yep. So you will be the bait. Oh, maybe we don't even need bait. Sending in his Band of Presages. Oh my god. Alright, we'll send everyone in then. Otherwise they're gonna crush us. Nice. Their defense is <laughs> piss poor compared to us. We're gonna lose some of our raw beams, which is, is always sad, but... So they all seemingly have the same range. I'm not sure what that 190 does then. No, I, guess, I guess this is the 190 difference, which makes no sense. Alright, fuck them up. Actually, I might just send over one cavalry unit, because otherwise they're gonna keep doing too much damage to my band of brass. Uh, to my broad beams. Band of brass, broad beams. They both start with B. Of course, you're gonna get stuck on them. So keep moving. Do not stop. And then archers. Fight on the merchant militia. And you run circles around them. You get back to your position there. You might follow, but you probably won't. Alright, pikemen, where are you going, lads? Move up. Pay attention to what he does. Alright, fire on the merchant militia in the rear, why not? Are we hitting anything? No, we're firing in a pretty shitty line. Alright, fire, fire, fire. Should do a lot of damage to them. 
Timer's already halfway there. Yeah, someone's annoying, man. Okay, they're moving. Pikeman, you're in position. Move forward a little bit more. Cavalry, get ready. Grinfarn, I forgot to move you because I'm an idiot. Hey, that's my horn. Move back, guys. Move back. Where's my cavalry? Oh, there they are. Took them long enough. Yeah, they're getting stuck on my bikes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You guys move here. Spam brassages are very annoying. Fuck them up. Nice. Only a fool could lose his battle. Becomes a fool. Let's cue the heroic dwarf music. Alright, Grimborn Reavers, get them. I'd love to fuck up those archers, they're very much working on my nerves. Alright, that seems to be working out. Slaughter them. If he wants to go after them, he'll have to deal with my cavalry as well. Fight them! You stop fighting, you're doing more damage to friendlies than anything else. Alright, so again, this is going pretty poor. <laughs> Not playing it as well as I sh probably should. Charging them back and forth from one target to the other. Okay, he's fucked. They're fucked. They're fucked, but they're killing a lot of my scouts, sadly. Really annoying. Nice. Fuck you, Wes. Who's the doom is mine? Alright, I have to kill this guy, Paladin. Paladin's still alive. It's pretty tough for Hobbit. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Ah, 98 losses ain't too bad. We healed quite a few. Probably even cavalry got healed quite a bit, so that's fine. That is all fine. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay. Good shit. Alright, so that's Buzzard of Doom reclaimed. I hope for the last time. Let's just hold on to it now. Let us hold on to it. Alright. Good fight. Now we can get a ceasefire with Bree. Let's see, I think Buzzard Doom will wreck it a lot of money. And I think it might also still have a ton of our culture. 1.4k, that's really good. And yeah, it's still mostly our culture. The mining network is built by the elves. An elven mining network? Well, God bless. Don't have to invest in that. Apothecary. Oh, very nice. Oh, good shit, actually. I built that. So it's just an amalgam amalgamation of Northmen, Elvish, and Dwarvish buildings, which is pretty cool, actually, in some way. Let us get... Actually, we don't need the mines because they give us culture increase. Uh, we don't need the brewery because the mines give us... Oh, jeez. Population increase. So we can focus on, like, trade and shit. Alright, and an extra 2k as well. Beautiful. Alright, Bree. I've been kicking your ass. You literally got Angmar at your doorstep. This had best be worth our time. Could try for asking a little bit of extra money. What about 10,000? That's probably too much. It's balanced. It's Yay, they accepted it. Nice. So we have peace with Bree. We can hold on to both Buzzardum and Undertowers. 
And we got tanky. I consider this an absolute win. Let's see. Uh, Ballista Maker, meh. Mining complex, probably should get that. Now that we can afford it. Thornton's Halls, keep building there. Mythlond, poo poo poo. Well, a little bit worried about Captain Muriakhan. So I should probably send this army over to uh, wipe him out. We can leave one of the militia behind. Yep. Although I imagine he will send the force to try and reclaim on the towers, but that might work in our favor. Alright, then you go talk to Tharbad, which I have no real clue where they are. Is this Tharbad? No, not Tharbad. Anadwaith. Ah, oh, there's an Anadwaith. I mean, they control Tharbad, but Tharbad's a city, not a population. Not a faction, I should say. New family member, Lily. Alright. Welcome to the family tree, Ori. Actually, let's take a look at our family tree. Is it healthy? Because I know dwarves sometimes have trouble making babies, kind of like pandas do. Alright, well, it's looking pretty healthy. We lost Grinfarn, but that was fake Grinfarn. So we have Dragon Age Origins Dwarf, Balin. He's 11, so he'll turn up soon enough. Darren died as well in battle, so we lost a couple of our uh, noble dwarves. This guy's mainly getting uh, young women. But all in all, ah, this guy is making a lot of man babies, so that's good. Nice. Very nice. All in all, it's it. Pretty, pretty good. And you've finished your elites. So we can send them to the front line as well. See them in action. Um, so yeah, I think now is just the time to be aggressive against Angmar, which... It's not going to be easy, mind you. But... They are busy with... Don, uh, not Donlands, but the Dunedain, Bree, and the High Elves, so I think we're okay. Um, I didn't think I did everything I wanted to do. So, let's leave behind Golden Travels. Yep, that's reducing them quite a bit because Grinfarn, of course, does add some positive traits there, but we need him on the battlefield. I forgot to move my diplomat. So, I hope we can get an alliance with the end of the way. Ugh, as I yawn. Because that will make life a lot easier. A whole lot easier, indeed. Alright, so we're 80 turns in, and now we can start our true conquest. Having Buzzardum and Under Towers is quite good. Especially the building cost reduction, just overall 10% off. That's pretty huge, man. Especially with like the Master Masons, Guild Houses, and all that jazz. That is pretty legit stuff. Now, of course, we need to remember that we have that special guild in Mythland, so we do want to make Mythland one of our true production centers as well. And also our trade hub, and they also get mines. Mythland's just a great settlement. Maybe we should make it our capital at one point. And an extra gift! Not that I needed it, but thank you. A breeze on the siege, Alkfood is sacked, oh, that's not good. Let's hope that and otherwise diplomat's still there. Yes, he is. Hello, would you like an alliance? Just straight up. Yay! Nice! Nice! That's good, so I don't have to worry about my southern border for now. Maybe I'm asking too much. Yeah, I'm asking too much. No, wait, I'm not gonna pay you. I always press the wrong buttons. Um, let's see, a thousand. Alright, alright, alright. Chill, chill, chill. Just wanna be able to afford more troops, man. I'm gonna start fielding full stacks. Alright, no problem. No problem. An alliance! Good, good, good. A very practical alliance. And the Ballista Maker and Guzna. Let's get the Catapult Maker. Uh, any other settlements I can build? God, how like off and get a Ballista Maker? Meh. Uh, this guy's being annoying. But he's leaving Ostgalon relatively undefended. But he could, like, take Perthandun in one go because Perthandun does not get walls or garrison, which is annoying because I could stop him if I wanted to. At least we can stop the sacking of Mythlond. Uh, but yeah, Mython does have, what is it, Durin's Forge Hall. So, let us get, first of all, the port. Grindfarn, you move to Under Towers. No, you can't actually make it there. I thought maybe for a free upkeep for one turn. Um, we can get the brewery then here if we keep it. So, doom, very nice. Is that like Devastation or something? No, Corruption. My Corruption is really high. What's causing that? I don't know what's causing that. Is it the same here? 
Uh, less so, a little bit of devastation because of that fucking Angma Force. We'll take care of them. Uh, we'll take care of this guy and then Ostkalon. He's like splitting up his troops a little bit, so that's good for us. We keep an eye on them. Go north. Right, so Numenos is still firmly in the hands of the Dunedain. Okay. Any more units? Yeah, these guys are sent to go. Heligoth. Send them to the front line. Uh, I'll keep you there. Ah, Captain Druden. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. You might try and attack them. Mm. No, fuck. Should not have done that. Well, let's see. Let's see. There's nothing I can... Yeah, I... That was bad. I should have checked their... Uh, Zone of control, and I've got to move my diplomat near Kant again. At one point, we'll get a trade agreement with Kant. Not that it adds much, because I don't think there's any way we're going to get caravans all the way to Kant. And then I want to send in that Gore Doomstack, man. That's going to do a ton of damage. Even if it's not barracks event units, it's still dwarven pikes and dwarven crossbows, which you should always worry about. But yeah. The first time I get two dwarven elites, and I send them in probably to die, because I imagine Angmar's going to attack them. In which case, I'll just do the auto resolve. Alright, Mythland, don't worry about that. Clan Lord Green's, oh, Clan Harold Green's coming in. Garth Heligoff again, okay, interesting. So Angmar's just splitting up his forces and just being annoying, whilst I'm consolidating my forces to do with Oscalon. Is he going for Birth and Loon? No, he's not, okay. He might just be going straight for Thorin's Halls. And that's where the annoyance of being the dwarves comes in. Mordor Supreme, oh god. Because they, of course, move much faster and much further than we do, even in our own lands. Yeah, we can't attack him. But we can attack you. Attack him. Uh, uh, Captain Gurn, I really don't want to use you. Just to stay in the. Oh, we're losing money. No. I always do it wrong. Yeah, it needs to be like that. Uh, it's very confusing. So, ooh, it's actually sending in some decent units. Three decent units, four trashy units. Alright, let's do this. Our army isn't the most advanced, but it should be more than enough to take care of their forces. But, like, once we deal with these forces that are invading our lands now, I don't think they have much else to throw at us. And it's mainly the defenders are throwing at us as well. Like, Ostgolon is also now a bit more ripe for the taking. For example, okie dokie, pikes, they are going to be important, uh, actually move you back a little bit so we can have a broad line of crossbows just going absolutely nuts, oh yes, this is going to hurt them real good. Uh, let's make sure you're all fighting at will, you're not scouting or skirmishing or whatever. Okay, yep, good. Wish I had like one unit of deal cavalry, that would help. I thought I was. Con I always mix up the button, it's so annoying, it makes no sense. There's no logic behind it. Alright, he's sending in his longbows, which we are going to destroy. We should move a little bit closer for that. They outrange us, except for our broad beams, but now these guys are also in range. Alright, move as close as you have to. Pikes will follow behind. To destroy them. Oh, they look sexy. I think my troops are quite cool. Come on, return fire. We out fired them like nuts, so please do it. It's firing my long beards. Ass hat. We should be sending out a lot more fire than that with all those units we have. There we go, that's better. Shot after shot after shot after shot. Oh, so just staggered for a bit and started reloading. Keep firing on them. Yes. Good. Keep firing. 
He's nuts to do this. He's bad at getting any one of mine. Alright, so much for my positioning. It's annoying that my units have different range. Oh no, I told you to be in the fa- Yeah, you're getting completely fucked because you're a bloody mo- Oh my god. Uh, see, this is... Like, what are you doing? The f yeah, you just wasted that entire garrison for no reason. You bloody moron. My god, I hate the AI. Why do they do that? I specifically ticked the box that... Those boxes need to be fixed, man. I specifically ticked the box that said to control this army in battle. I don't know how much more clear I have to be. That seems pretty bloody awfully clear to me. But apparently it's not. You're completely fucked. Yeah, run away. Unsteady as an egg on a stick. Oh, that puts it nicely. And quite accurately as well. Bloody retards. And I make that mistake time and time again. I always press the wrong bloody buttons because it makes no bloody sense. Fight on them because they're armor piercing, so they kind of scare me. Come on, you guys need to be firing much faster than that. Seriously, much faster. Uh, you're all running. Uh, it's better than dying, I guess. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Uh, Not the greatest positioning on my part. I could have played this battle much better. Unnecessary losses, but I was just kind of miffed with the my AI ally doing stupid shit. Kind of threw me off a bit. Well, I really should get some cavalry in here. Right, that should fuck him up though. Nice charge in the rear. Right, Iron Crown Warriors. Hmm. Fairly scary units. Very scary unit. This bloody rude old savage came back. Which are quite tough like that. That of course I'm a piercing. Hello there. Don't hit your own guys like that. Jesus. Maniacs. Yeah, they routed. These guys are surprisingly tough. Oh well. They'll die on the same. Uh fight on them. Who's that? What a, what a pikeman. That was actually a pretty big army, to be honest. Nice. And we can't run them down because we don't have horses. Alright. All archers fired on them. Pikes get into a semblance of a position, please. They should die relatively easily. With all that crossbow fire. Because our warriors are still alive as well. Fire away, laddies. Fire away. I know my troops are positioned kind of poorly. 
A bit worried about that iron crown one. Those helmet keep coming back as well as bloody ass hats. Do -do -do. Yeah, positioning was horrible, and positioning is kind of key as a dwarf, so. It's about not go as well as I would have liked, I'm not gonna lie. But it could have gone worse, I guess. Those guys will just run straight up. Yeah, just uh, some deal cavalry would have helped massively. I'll just stop fighting. Except you guys. Okay, well, let's just end it. Well, I mean, didn't last too many, but except for, of course, the reinforcement force. They lost pretty much everyone. Bloody morons, I swear to god. Now I need to retrain you. Ah. It's also super annoying that Angmar invades my land, because they know. They bloody know that they are quicker than me. There's not much I can do to, like stop that. They can just run past me. I uh, hope that with the quicker, or the better roads, we won't have that issue as much. Ah, bloody hell. Alright, now to move back. <laughs> Put you in under towers just a little bit, because I'm afraid they might attack it. Yeah, I'm not sure what Lindenkind will do. He's right there! Attack him! Uh, then got Heligoth. Well, good thing I kept the armory there. Don't think we can stop this guy. I think I'll just wait by the sideline. Uh, rather not lose Garth Heligoth, of course. But yeah, I just I need to get my troops to where I'm needed. So, well, I guess. If we get these guys and meet up with Grinfarn, that could be enough to take Ostgal on. So perhaps I should just already move him out. Yeah, Grinfarn himself gets way more movement. Uh, yeah, I'll leave you behind. Alright, well, all in all, we'll, we'll get them. No worries about that, it's just... How? Quite annoying. Yeah, you just stay there for a bit. Think about what you've done. Wasn't I trading some troops somewhere? Hmm. Guess I already completed that. Okay, well, we are out of money, so let us go talk to Khand. Who I know are here. I know there's a settlement here as well, but despite playing Khand, I still don't know where all the settlements are. Can't help getting faltering courage. What? Running away from the enemy? Oh, because his allies did? What kind of bullshit is that? What kind of BS is that? Alright, uh, we shouldn't go straight into, uh, like, an alliance with the Dunedin. We should keep on, like, good terms. Swap out some map information. I actually don't have much map left. <laughs> Seems Angmar has been kicking their ass quite a bit. I think Barketa is over here. Alright, well, let's hope Angmar doesn't do anything more annoying. If they want to be really annoying, they take Garth Helagoff and Perth and do it all in one fell swoop, and there's nothing I can do about that. Because we're dwarves and we're slow as fuck. Which is annoying, because we're gonna beat Angmar at one point, I'm sure of it. But it, it just makes everything much slower and way more laid back. And despite the sloth being my favorite animal, I would still prefer for them to be a bit faster. <sighs> okay. Yeah, okay, so he's going for Garth Hologoth, which uh, I don't see us holding that one. It's one of the, like, the Rohan guys. Unless we get, like, amazing Pelissitars, which we might, so let's give it a shot. You never know. I'm gonna lose Nar, which is sad. But uh, it's unavoidable. It is unavoidable. There's nothing I can do. Because I was sending an extra reinforcement that might have made the difference. One crossbow unit can do a lot. So maybe, just maybe. My Lord, the tide of oh, so this has got Heligoth. Not exactly what I had in mind. Alright, well, let's just clump at the gate, I guess. Not much else to do. Oh, we can clump at the town center. 
Ah, uh, hang on a second. This summit looks familiar. There was one Gondor settlement that looked exactly like this, and I was at trouble placing my troops there. I despise that settlement. At least the uh, units are a bit smaller here. So we'll just make like a uh, triple line, I guess. Maybe we set the ram on fire. Anything short of that, or just a straight up miracle, will not be enough. Like, they have a general, so they must get witch knights as well. I don't, I don't see any witch knights. Maybe it's a custom general. Where is this general? Is it the end of Vascarls? Yeah, it seems to be. Alright. Well, they're also plenty scary, so. Oh, we've already killed 2%. We will take back Garth Golf, don't worry about that. It's just... It's just annoying. Because the they move the so much faster than we do, even our own lands. Yeah, that's just simply unavoidable. Alright, well, let's just kill as much as possible. Alright, yeah, let's get in there and let's just watch the carnage unfold. Nothing else we can do. Oh, my defenders are dropping really fast. Well, I'm killing quite a few of them, but not enough. Nowhere near enough. Towers have stopped firing as well. That sucks. Yeah, it's not looking great. Maybe, yeah. What did you expect? I was hoping we could maybe kill the general with like a lucky shot, but I guess that ain't happening. Well, it ain't over till it's over now. Now, who's in her nobles? Ah, oh, still standing. But yeah, we'll lose the settlement. That's okay. At least they didn't attack that one army that I parked outside. We can join them up with Uo and reclaim the settlement. And then take Oscalon as well. But first, we need to deal with the army near Perthendun, which they might still go after Perthendun, which would be fucking annoying as well. Alright, boys, you did all you could. You killed. Well, 36%. That's not horrible. One third. Uh, towers are activated again. Ah, uh, well. Ah, uh, well. Just the general left. 38%, that's not horrible, I mean, considering. Ah, oh, my lord. Where is he? He's over here. I thought generals got the relentless trade, it could no longer be staggered, but this guy's getting staggered plenty. Well, this is awkward. Just kill the man already. Put him out of his misery. Okay. Well, that's pretty sad. Still alive, it's pretty tanky though. It's not really achieving much. Sus girls and savages are just going a bit nuts outside. Run for the town square, lad. Stop them. There's no way you're moving through any of this. Oh lord. Oh, they're gonna seize it like that. My general's still alive, still kicking. He's not doing anything, he's just kind of buggered out, it seems. My god, he was tanky though, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, but I can't move, man. I can't move. I'm stuck. Door stuck. Yeah, no. yeah that's the thing though. I want to leave my settlements back home undefended because we need our troops on the front line, but at the same time, Angwa can just sneak through our lines like that because they move much faster than we can. So that's. Annoying. That's super annoying. That's one way to really counter the dwarves is to abuse that low movement speed. Uh, so let's hope they don't push in deeper. Because they could just go right up to Famgathol now if they wanted to. There's no way I can get troops there in time. Alright, Goth Halagoth Falls. Oh, annoying. Please don't destroy Perthen Loon. Please just attack me. Just fight. If you're gonna go into my lands, at least fight, you cowards. Because that's what they are, they're bloody cowards. 
Alright, so where's that one army? Alright, Lindenkind. Ah, I don't want to be inclined to just send this guy in. This guy's also still there. I should probably send Grinfarn in to deal with him. Uh, spy, 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 where are you? Can you go towards Goth Helicoff, please? Even my spies are like a little movement range. Noble death, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Not great. So, okay, first we need to deal with this guy, Lindenkind. I should send Gorin because that is my main force. But that's like all his movement points and probably not even enough. Or I could send this guy here, and that should probably block him retreating. Okay, it doesn't. Oh my god, at least we can, like, reinforce. Um, right, I'm gonna save, and if I do it wrong again, I'm gonna... So we need to not take it, right? Lindenkind. Bloody annoying asshat. We can crush any army they send towards us, but if they just start ignoring our forces and just start invading our lands, being little annoying asshats about it, this is going to take unnecessarily long. Alright, start deployment. Um, let's try not to rely on the reinforcements too much. Let's try to kill them with this force. So let's just use our crossbows and pull these guys back. We're ready here. Alright. Sorry, my square's being squeaky again. Let them move around. These guys seem to be firing. Not sure on who. Oh, those Rudor pikes. Oh, nice. Three kills. If he wants to run, that's fine. Oh, look. The Longbeard Phalanx. What do they look like? Oh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Any other new units? Yes, the long bit swordsmen. Where are they? Not fully in the battlefield yet. Ah, never mind then. Um, fire on them, please. Long bit swordsmen. So yeah, also, when the... Reinforcements army is controlled by the AI, the other AI seems to be way more aggressive. Instead of when it's controlled by men. But yeah, these guys look pretty cool. I like their chainmail. Very nice design. Alright, Angmar, what are you doing? Just wanna shoot you, man. Just wanna get in range, shoot you, lure you into my pikes. Probably send these guys over. Oh fuck! Suddenly that went fast. Well, they're just skirmishers, so they're just gonna beat us out. These as well. And they'll do a ton of damage with their javelins, but we'll do way more damage. Trust me. Now right, you guys come over. Yeah, we did more damage. <sighs> the AI always moves in such unpredictable patterns. Like, what are you doing now? What do you want from me? Don't take my lunch money. Screw wogs. Also, you guys have the high ground. What are you still waiting for? Rudor Lancemen. Yeah, the Rudor really are like Germanic inspired, you can tell. Some thralls in there as well. Savages. Scared me. I wish I had some cavalry. Hey, that rhymes. I always say, if it rhymes, it's the truth. Oh, Huskars. Bloody hell. Alright, archers. Pull back. 
rather quickly, please. Not sure who this is. Come on, move, 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 move. Quick, please. Alright, I need to send in these guys a bit faster. I can wait for the pikes, that's fine. They're less important. Alright, if he wants to run to my pikes, that's good. Let him. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Alright, keep firing. I feel like I'm losing my mind more and more as I do these episodes. <laughs> I just randomly start saying crazy shit. Alright. 1% for 16%, that's good. Those are quality numbers. Focus on those pikemen, they're the ones who can do some real grief. These guys as well, though. There's bloody reinforcements, eh? Taking their bloody time. Nice point blank fire doing pretty good damage. Oh, they're already running. Never mind them. Oh, those fucking throw axes, though, do tons and tons of damage. There's not much I can do about that, though. Bloody thralls, eh? Stubbornness of the dwarves. Yeah, like the dwarves are coming in so slow. So sluggish. At least our pikes can keep them at bay fairly easily. Give them a volley. Just kill their entire charging line. Nice, good job. Who's here first? Oh, nice, firebird warriors. Good, good, good. We need them. And our pikes are just nicely holding the lines. Not really suffering any casualties, which is excellent. I mean, you want to have a go? I thought. That's what I thought! Come on, lad. Come on, boys. Keep moving, keep shooting, keep slaying. Then they run, and I have no means of running them down. Yeah, I need cavalry, alright. Pretty clear. Pretty clear that I need cavalry. Because now we're going to have most of them still alive. Which is also part of the issue, because we can't run them down, and then they're still like in our lands, and my settlements are relatively undefended. So perhaps I should have held on to those uh, armories, just so I could leave them more undefended. Lull them into a false sense of security. Maybe once my economy is stronger, I'll rebuild them. What a mess of a battle. Yeah, okay. Um, anything else? Oh, these guys. The landsmen. Men of the land. Oh, this battle's pretty much over. Despite only having killed 65-ish percent. Just run in and then quickly realize their mistake. Yeah, these guys are gonna keep being assholes. Yeah, but we can't run down, lads. I wish we just had like one unit of cavalry. Just one. We do so much. Um, you guys fight on them. They're being annoying.
All right, well that should be the last of them, I guess. Yep, and we have lost 7%, which is not that much. And we will heal a couple as well. Yeah, I mean, our, our weaknesses are clear. This was a battle that really showed our weakness, and that's lack of cavalry, lack of anything fast moving. Yeah, we crush them, but we, we lose a lot more than we should lose because of the lack of cavalry. That one is unit got destroyed. It's mainly that unit that causes our losses, so it's okay. It is okay. Um, so yeah, let's hope most of that army is gone and we can start sending these forces into Angmar land. So they're on the defense instead of the offense. Because they have really kind of lost track of what this war is all about, eh? They think they're still attacking us. They don't realize that we have made some strategic diplomatic decisions. Okay, they're dead anyway. Okay, good. Uh, you move here. I uh, should take care of that guy first. Go, I uh, can't move. Go, go. We'll take Ostgalon. But who will take this place? That I don't know. And that I really want to know. Sending in more troops. Yeah, I see. Angmar's gonna keep being annoying. So we take down this guy. He moves back, which cost me more of my, which cost me all my movement speed basically. Um. Ah, oh, this guy's cavalry, good. Um, we should probably send one of these two cavalry forces to go or see that we can get a merchant squad ourselves. Um, so the thing is, we still need a force to go north and take Garthelagov back, so maybe I should split up the Gorstai because they have two generals. But then I'm kind of splitting up my own forces, which I don't want. I want to have a strong army. Ah, but as the dwarves, that's tough because, well, you move much slower and all your troops are just in one place. Right, this should be a fairly easy fight though. I'm gonna use our superior archers, oh they're in range, beautiful. And our cavalry to crush them. Wait for the pikes. Oh, look at that ass hat running around just to go after my crossbows. Despite dying really fast himself, his sole goal is to be annoying. This guy's just running off my uh, cavalry, which is horribly stupid. Oh, what? Man, I hate it when they come back. They're not supposed to come back. They're supposed to be dead. There we go. Now fire on those warriors. And let that be the end of that. Don't fire. Let the cavalry take care of him. There we go. Alright, so that's that army wiped out. With basically no losses. Good. <sighs> now there's still Garth Hallegoth to worry about. But at least we're cleansing them out one by one. But they can, of course, produce way more troops than we can. So we do need to start being more aggressive. But okay, I mean, it's, it's, it's alright. Losing Garth Hallegoth is annoying. But it's not a huge setback. Fuck you. Let's train some troops though. In Famgatol, for example. Because we'll bloody need them there. It'll take a couple turns, but that's okay. Um. You have the rings? Yeah, you have the rings. Beautiful. Alright, you guys team up. And I'm going to let you take care of Ostgalon. And Lord Gore, you will also go to Ostgalon, but you will then move north. 
to take Goth Halagoth back. This time we'll move to Famgathol, we'll get some reinforcements there. That should be fine. I don't think they'll push any further than Goth Halagoth, and we are going to start pushing in their land then. Luckily, Angmar is not too wide a stretch of land. It's mostly a, a long stretch of land. But that kind of makes it easier to keep my forces not too far from each other, so you can always reinforce. If you watch my Khan campaign, you know that's kind of an issue we have with Harad. Being so spread out, it makes it annoying because they can always send troops in through sneaky pathways, you know, can kind of ignore your troops. And the AI loves to do that, which makes sense, strategically makes a lot of sense, but it's bloody annoying and bloody difficult to deal with, especially when you're as the dwarfs who have really low movement speed, which also makes sense, you know, lore-wise, it makes sense. I mean, not even lore-wise, just look at them. Short stubby legs. All right, King of Ruins dead. Enidwyth also lost someone. As long as that faction, if Enidwyth suddenly dies, that would change things up so fucking badly. All right, you stay here for now. Clan Harold Green, you move in. Go, you also move in. Yeah, he's so slow. I hope I get some traits of like, because I'm moving around quite a bit now. So reclaiming Nasa. Yeah, we're working on it. We need to kill Aragorn for that. I like a trait. I know there's a trait for getting lazy. Plus 5% movement points, for example, there, that one. And the sense logistics, also plus 5%. So he's already one of the faster movers. Alright, is he sending out a force? Doesn't seem like he is. He's gathering forces here to send to me, though. Furost is relatively undefended. Hi, I was blocking Angmar now. Great. Alright. Um, let's keep sending over forces. Construction complete of a port in Mythlons. Nice. Mythlons is getting more and more rich now, which is good. Let's just get the pig farm. It's always good. Always handy. Push it a doom. Not building anything there for now. That's okay. And the tower is also leaving relatively undefended. Let's just hope he's not sending any forces to reclaim that one. Uh, okay, we'll leave you there for now. But now he's like beefing up Ostgalon again. For some reason, he really likes Ost. If need be, I will just send two stacks to deal with Ostgalon. I will. Because if that if Ostgalon's army is gone, I can't imagine having much more on that front line. I must only assume that all the other summons are relatively un um, abandoned. Is what I'm trying to say. But that is, of course, an assumption. One that I cannot really uh, provide any evidence for. So we'll just have to see. We will have to see. But all in all, I'd say we're, pretty, we're doing pretty well. I mean, looking back where we came from, things looked a bit hairy for us. It is one of the more difficult campaigns, of course, and I'm not one of the best players out there, but... All in all, I'd say we pulled that one uh, together somehow. Uh, hmm, will I hire you? Uh, not too bad. I'll take you. Where do you spawn anyway? Is that Perth and Loon? That is Perth and Loon. Uh, I'll actually send you to Pusat Doom. Alright, let's check. Alright, so he's sending out he's sending out his forces. He's leaving Ostgalon relatively un, uh, undefended. Alright, so Garth Hilligoff is empty, so those troops are moving somewhere. They're moving here. Probably going to like Huzin or something. So, that. so that's the, th the stuff I need to be prepared for, because he can like move much further than we can. So you go north. Well, Green, it's gonna be your job to deal with these two guys. It's not gonna be easy. Ah, this is a pretty shit stack. Okay, thing is, they run over that, which is first annoying and also that is actually possible there's a crossing here we'd fight this guy on a bridge but I think we can lure him over our bridge because we have two broadspin marksmen so I think we can crush him let this be the last battle of today if we crush him then the road to Ostgalon is relatively open except for this army and who knows where they go they might go to Mithlon they might go to under towers that's the issue I'm talking about. At this rate, I should have defenders in every settlement just in case someone pushes through. Because otherwise, I'm going to keep having to move troops back to reclaim. And... Alright, so it is a bridge battle, but first of all, we have many more 
archer troops than they have. I don't know how many archer troops they have, I just know we have more. We're gonna use our Brabby Marksman to lure him across the bridge. And then we're just gonna lay onto him. And our pikes will also be ready to poke them like crazy. Um, the cavalry will still just stay behind if we to run down. Let's pause for a second. They are there. Okay. So, oh, these guys are already in range. See what I mean? You see what I mean? So they're gonna actually put our pikes in double formation. Bob beams, you can actually stay. Well, I was gonna send you in to cover them, but I guess that won't be necessary. Um, this side here. This guy might also be in range then. Yeah, see, they're coming over. They're not coming over, they're waiting, but they're just getting shot then. I forgot to move some of these. So these lads, alright, so they're just gonna fucking get annihilated. Not perfect positioning, but good enough positioning. They're already starting to rout. Make sure to fire most on the back lines. Avoid friendly fire as much as possible. Like in these kind of clum battles, dwarves are always gonna win. This few units that get through will get pike. But yeah, I wanted to get my pikes more in the front, but I uh, can't win them all, I guess. Gotta keep firing on the back, let the infantry take care of the front. Two percent down. It's more than I would like. But it's enough for us that we can replenish. Alright. Nice. Pretty quick. We'll probably route the rest so we keep our cavalry on standby. Three percent versus forty two percent. Yeah, start fighting on the runners. They are running that way, so I'm not going to rush in my cavalry just yet. Are they all running? There's a couple still, uh, still standing. I can fire on them, kill most of them already, just to make sure we don't see their like ever again in these lands. Alright, all right, there we go. So what we're going to do is tell other missiles to stop firing. Spam that command a little bit, and then send over the cavalry. Start fighting. This guy is still getting ready to fight. No, I, I'm. You're getting fired. All right. Get across the bridge. Slaughter them all. Oh, my laptop made some noise. My laptop decided to do a update of my printer drivers. At work we have these big mobile printers so you can give a print command wherever you are. But seeing as it's the corona crisis, you know, I'm not gonna print anything at work right now. I'm not gonna take the train for an hour just to go to work, just to print something. That's a bit silly. So I'm not sure why they decided to do the update now. Maybe because no one's using it. So no one's gonna send in like, it's not working for me, blah blah blah. Like, ah, we can do an update without having all those emails of people who are completely illiterate with computers. Alright, so we are getting most of them. I'd say this would be a white stack. Good! Alright, so that's the main bulk of Ostgalon gone. So, next episode. Claim Ostgalon, defeat that one army that got away from Ostgalon, retake Goth Heligov, and then push deeper into Angmar land. We are now at peace, of course, with Bree. We're allied with Enedwyth, we're on relatively decent terms with the Dunedain, so we can focus all we have on Angmar. And we're going to do that. We're going to crush Angmar. And then we can start looking south. Alright. Nice. Good shit. So, yeah, that's good. There we go. Clear victory. Lost 50. 
Who did we lose the most? Some pikes? That's okay. Some reavers? Uh, not as good, but okay. Actually, didn't heal as much as I would have thought. But we only lost 50 in total, which is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, my laptop's making more noises. I hope the microphone doesn't pick it up, but I think it might. It's relatively, um, how do you say that, susceptible to sound. Picks up pretty much everything. Alright, but I'd say this was a successful episode. Despite losing Gar Heligoth, it's only a temporary setback. We'll have plenty of those, seeing as we're the dwarves and we're pretty slow, so... Ooh, that's quite a lot of money, actually. I don't care. Alright, can I still move you in to fight this guy? I can. Alright, so we're gonna do that next time. Then move to Askelon. We don't have any armies to worry about over here. Uh, and then we'll move you north. You take care of this guy, take back Goth Heligoth, and then we just start pushing in with two relatively full stacks. Seizing all the land, leaving them relatively undefended behind, which is of course setting us up for trouble a little bit. But I think it's the best way to go about it, to crush Angmar completely, otherwise it's going to take too long. So yeah, thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I also hope to catch you next time. Bye bye!